you need to look at your life right now. And this is really important because most people will fail massively at doing this while validating why they don't need to. What people do is they go, you know, just because I'm not jacked or rich or have a nice car or a big house or a big bank account doesn't mean I'm not happy. Yes, it does. You are lying to yourself and you are lying to everybody else. It is not the money that makes you happy. It's the freedom you get when you have it. It is who you need to become as a person to get the money, to get the fitness. Anybody here that has chiseled out an incredible physique required a sacrifice as a person. It required a different mindset as a person. Anyone that has a skill set that is so detailed and specific required a change in character. The point is, whether you're shooting a gun, lifting a weight, building a bank account, you are required to become someone different. And when you get to that point, you think it's this finite destination. You think it's this finite place. And then we start making up reasons why we should just stay there. It requires sacrifice. It requires time. It requires energy. It requires a mindset change. If your mindset is dirty, if it's garbage, if it's corrupt, if it's lazy, you end up always in the same place. It doesn't matter. You always end up in the same place. Regret. You will always end up in the same place. So what people do is they go, well, what? So I'm not rich and I'm not jacked and I don't have a six pack abs or I don't have, you know, like giant arms or big legs or I can't move all this weight or I don't drive a flashy car. That means I'm, I don't have any worth. I didn't say that. It means you're lazy as fuck and you're selling yourself on a narrative in order to make yourself feel better for living in mediocrity. You absolutely influence the environment around you. And if you are not taking the actions that create the best version of yourself, you're selfish. You're fucking selfish. Because you are influencing all the people around you. You are influencing the world around you. You are influencing your friends, your family, people you don't even know. If people look at you and you are not living your best version of who you are and who you can be, fuck, you are selfish. Like, how dare you have the audacity to think that's acceptable? Because everybody around you is being influenced by your laziness. If I didn't go outside, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be me cutting lawns. But if I didn't go outside with oxygen dangling off my face, struggling with a pull-up or a lunge, and I sat on my couch or I slept in my bed or I complained about how shitty it was to have one lung, can I actually physically get up and do something about it? Yeah. If I don't, I'm lazy. And you know who I influence? My wife my children, you guys. That means I am allowing myself to be a lesser version of me for my ego, for my fragile little bitch ass ego. And I'm taking you all down with me. You've got to look at your actions that way. You've got to look at what you are doing in that kind of light. Because if you don't, you're going to validate why it's okay to live substandard. I don't want to invest in that right now. Why? I don't want to do the work to, to get stronger like that right now. Why? Well, I don't need a Lamborghini. Okay. Buy another car that's nice. You sporting around with your 77 fucking Impala four-door with three hubcaps and a cracked windshield going, I'm saving money so I can get rich. Just to be clear, the percentage of people on this planet that have effectively become unbelievably wealthy by saving money is exactly zero. No. You go out and you take what you want from this world because the universe will only give you what you are willing to put the work in and take.
It will not give you a damn thing if you sit there and beg for it. If you go, please, or I'll be ready when, or I'll do it when, or I'll try later. Look at the last 10 years of your life. This is the most unbelievable thing you can ever do to yourself is look at the last 10, 10 years of your life. And look at what has transpired over 10 years to level you up. And then ask this question. Could I have done more? I already know the answer is fuck yes. Because if you say anything less, you are validating mediocrity because you can always do more. Could you do one more rep if your life was on the line or the life of somebody you love? No matter what, if you're like, I have no more reps in me, could you do one more? You know you can. But that's what I'm talking about. Why? Look at your life right now and ask yourself, why are you there? Are you living the life you want to live right now? Are you in the life you want to live right now, right this minute? Are you genuinely living exactly how you want your life to look? Take a sheet of paper, write down exactly what the most incredible day would look like for you. Everything. I don't care what it is. If you, from line to line, from money, fitness, how you feel, what you eat, what you drink, like whatever you're doing in the fucking bedroom, it doesn't matter. Write it all down. And then today, write down your day. See if they match. You know what's wild? I'll show you something really cool. If you just do that and nothing else, and you literally get off this call right now, and you just do this one thing, take the way your day is now, and the day you absolutely want to have happen every day of your life, and you spend the next year doing nothing but getting those lists to match, your life will be radically different. You will have more abundance. There is so much abundance out there. There's so much abundance here. There's so much abundance on this fucking call. And to think anything less is just, it's so self-destructive. You are destroying your own life by choice if you think anything less than that. But if you work for the next six months to just do one thing, make those lists match. You will be unrecognizable in six months to yourself. But there's a reason why most people don't do that. Fear. What are you holding on to that's keeping you in the place that you're in right now? What are you holding on to? What in the fuck are you afraid of taking risk on that is keeping you where you are right now? You're 40. What are you waiting for? You're 50. You're 25. It doesn't matter. What are you afraid of taking a risk on to change the current status of your existence on this planet. You don't get to do this again. I don't care if you believe in reincarnation or God or Buddha. It doesn't matter. What if you get reincarnated as a fucking toilet brush? You're screwed. Your whole life is shitty. I could do this all day. You have got to look at your life and ask yourself, am I where I want to be? And then you have to get ruthlessly honest. Because if you are not ruthless and brutally honest with yourself, it will lead you to making excuses and validations as to why it's okay to be where you are. It is not okay to be where you are. There is a difference between being present and being where you are, being present in your execution, being present in your actions, being present in what you're doing every day in order to increase you. Being where you are, fucking boring. There is a difference. Yesterday, we went out for dinner, and then we stopped by this little chocolate place on the way out. I bought these chocolate caramel apples. And of course, I validate it by going, what's a fucking apple? Of course, apple a day keeps a doctor away. It doesn't matter if it's apple pie and apple fritter, caramel apple. It's an apple. So trust me, I'm a doctor, right? Well, I ordered everything. I walk out and in my head, I kind of went, well, that's a really small bill. Get in the car, drive home, 
opening up everything. Brandy goes, she forgot all her chocolate. And I went, fuck. So it started off in the store where we asked the lady for something. And this is just to give you an idea of what happens when you're not present. We pointed at exactly what we wanted and said, that one right there, these, this row of like these little caramel squares. Got it. And she pulls out all these ones with a bunch of fucking nuts on it. And we were like, no, not no nuts. I didn't even point at those. Those are three feet from where you fucking were. Not present. And she goes, oh, I'm sorry. It's just, it's been a really long day. It's so busy. There's so many, it's just like, there's a lot going on. You know what went through my head? I don't fucking care. Suck less. Be better. It is not harsh. This world is so fragile and afraid of being offensive that everybody's like, fuck, how do, how do I tell them that they fucking suck? Easy, watch, you suck, get better. I come from a time when my gym teacher went, you're fat, work on it. Nobody died. You know what we didn't have in school? Fat kids. Anyone that is over 40, I'll tell you right now, can remember the one or two fat kids they had in elementary school because there were only one or two. Every single one of you motherfuckers that's over 40 will look at your whole, you will think back when we get off this call and go, yeah, shit, I actually remember their name. She looked like a hippo. But now it's commonplace. Get the fuck out of here. Suck less. So she puts these back, puts the right ones in the bag. Everything comes to fruition. I put my credit card in. She goes, there you go. She kind of drops the bag over the side because she's so frazzled. I pay for it. We walk out, get in the car, drive home. Thank God we only live like two miles away because when Brandy opened the bag, I went, are you fucking kidding me? So I throw on a baseball hat, jump in the truck, rip back over there. And this is what she says. Oh, you came back. See, I had them sitting here. It's been such a busy day. I actually forgot to even ring you up. This is where I saw an incredible deviation in lack of customer service. I saw them all sitting on a tray. She goes, you can check your credit card statement. I, I didn't charge you for them. I didn't even ring you up. I was wondering. It's just, I'm so frazzled today. I don't care. Pay attention. Be present where you are. If it was me, I would have said, I'm, she goes, I hope you didn't have to drive far. And then rings me up at full price. You know what I would have done? You guys already would know. I would have gone, there you go. Here's a couple more for fuck it, me just dropping the ball, man. Here you go. Here's a coupon for like 50% off next time you come in. I will take care of you, I promise. That is the difference between a leader and everybody else. You do what's right and you level the fuck up even if it costs you. Because the end result of that is more wins than you can count. I see people going, okay, I'm gonna join. I can teach you right now, any one of you guys, I can teach any one of you guys right now to make between 20 and 50 grand a month. And I can do it inside 90 days. The first question every one of you people should say is, uh, how do we do that and where do I pay? It's bizarre to me to when people go like, I roll around in every one of our cars is over, it's, it's a six figure car. You know, people don't ask, what do you do for a living? What? Are you fucking crazy? I wanna know what you're doing so I can ask you questions. Because unless you're an asshole, you're going to give me good advice. Which is just bizarre to me when they go, no, I, 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 I'm not ready yet. Sell a kidney. You got to. All things aside, you have to decide. But it, that's the problem is people don't go all in on where they know they need to go. Instead, they settle for mediocrity and then validate why they'll do it when, and they never do. And then go back to the 10-year question. Could you have done more in the last 10 years? The answer is always invariably yes. So if someone says, well, I don't know, people pay me a hundred grand to teach them how to have a better life, 
Not even how to make, they know how to make money better than me. And I know how to make money. Fucking business program. You get in for 10 fucking grand. Are you kidding me? Yet people settle for mediocrity. Ah, I just do not do my children, you know. Then, then keep fucking failing and quit whining about the life you wish you had. And you know what they do? They go, well, my life's not really that bad, Trev. Are you jacked as fuck? Are you driving the cars you want? Are you doing the things you want to do? And can you do them whether you are at your job or not? If the answer is all no, your life sucks. You are not where you want to be. And unless you are where you want to be, you are not living to your potential. And you are selfish because you are harming everybody around you. You're taking everybody else down with you. That is just fact. As immutable as gravity. They'll spend that 10K a year on coffee drive throughs Bullshit. They'll chase gimmicks. I need the quick fix. I need the workout. There's no easy workout. There's no easy money. There's no easy relationships. Everything requires work. We are in a world where we are taught that if there's work required, it's the wrong direction. I was raised, if there's work required, hit the fucking gas. I don't know any different. I, I just don't. I struggle to sit and take, watching a movie for me is so fucking hard. It takes me, you guys look at me. I run like a nitromethane roadster 24 seven. I do not know how to turn off. I, I am always doing something to engage, to level up. Because I, I don't know how to do anything different. If I sit down and I become complacent, I don't like how it feels. And people have conditioned themselves to think that's a good feeling. How is that a good feeling? That's like conditioning yourself that smoking is a good feeling. It didn't start off that way and you know it. There's not a single human being on earth that went, this is fucking great. And they took a puff. Never. Yet people are addicted to smoking. Does your life look the way you want it to look? Why not? If your reflex, if your response is hyper defensive, and you say, just because someone isn't jacked, rich, doesn't mean they're unhappy. What did I say? Yes, it fucking does. Because you are living a lesser version of yourself. You're being less than who you can be, man. There's nothing about that is something you want to brag about. And yet people go, oh God, I just need a little me time. You don't need me time. You're not disciplined enough to get things done and design the life the way you want it. So the me time is because you have anxiety and guilt because you know you're not doing what you should be doing and you must be doing to change. Everything that you do that is a soft goal, a low goal, a validation and excuse only breeds two things, anxiety and guilt. Because you know you can do more. You have got to lay in your bed sometimes and look up at the ceiling and think, I am meant for more. And if you don't, that's part of the problem. Because then you need to start dissecting and doing an autopsy on your life and your world and your environment and going, where is it that I am pulling myself down and accepting that, willing to accept that? You have to ask yourself, what am I willing to tolerate in my life versus taking the risks to change where I'm at? What am I willing? Like you are willing to tolerate it comes down to that word, willing. You are willing to tolerate because of the fear of the risks involved in order to create more. You've got to look at your life and dissect it yourself and ask yourself these questions all the time. You are unwilling to take the risk demanded by the universe to level up. You are advertising to the infinite energy around you that you are willing to tolerate mediocrity in defense of your ego. Holy shit. I literally started writing all this stuff. I had just music cranking in my ear and I started writing all this stuff this morning. I could have probably written a 400 page book. I could have just blasted. There was so much going through my head. You know why? Because I was fucking connected. It's just that simple. How many times have you looked at something and lost the creative? You felt disconnected. You could not get your head right. No matter what. you It's like reading the same line in a book 10 times going, I'm just not fucking understanding this. 
Anyone that's ever been a student knows damn well what that feels like. It sucks. You know why? Because you're not present. You're not connected to the now. You look at things and you scatter them out, right? You scatter all the things out that need to get done. All the musts in your life that will change your existence. And you look at the first one, you start to apply work on the first one while your eyes look at all the ones down the road. Which means you're not present and you're not focused on what you need to do, which means you're going to do a poor job and you're going to fail. And then you blame the action, the thing, the person, the job, the endeavor, and you validate why that's probably not the right thing for you. Yet deep down inside, that's exactly what you want to do. Why aren't you doing it? Well, it didn't work out the first time I tried. It's not going to. In fact, you're going to dump way more fucking money and time and energy into it if you keep going. And then all of a sudden, people are going to go, God, you are so lucky. Uh-huh. 20 years of plowing away at this, I got real fucking lucky. 